Hi guys, I'm here with uh, Philip Maratana, uh, the founder and organizer of the Campaigning Summit. Uh, originally, the event started in Vienna yeah. uh, six years ago. Four years ago. Four years ago. Yeah. And now we're in Berlin. Could you tell how the idea of the event came up and? Basically, the, the story is a pretty simple one. Uh, I have a background in politics, in party politics, and I always was attending conferences and was wondering about the fact that uh, at political conferences, uh, there are only the political bubble on the conference side of the corporate brands. There are only brand guys. They didn't mix up. All people stayed in their silos. And this was really something that I didn't actually enjoy very much. Uh, so I yeah, decided to, to do a conference that I would like to attend for my own. So this was the idea of the campaigning summit, bringing together people of all different sectors, but discussing one common issue. And the issue is, how can you actually mobilize and engage people in a digital age? And this was, was what we were talking about today in Berlin here too. So campaigning is not only political? Yeah. Campaigning is definitely only political. I think that in a, in, a, in a world where each and every one of us is interconnected, the, the, the skill to, to mobilize others, the skill to build, grow and engage networks is a skill that each and every one of us needs, that each brand, that each cause, that each political movement has to adapt for its own. So we're talking about an issue that is much, much huger than a political thing. We're, we try to, in our talks, uh, to talk about, uh, because we are a little bit obsessed with video, as you know. We love obsessions. And yeah. <laughs> uh, as your obsession is campaigning, ours is video. Yeah. And uh, how much uh, now in, in, in the work you do, how important is video in, in, in your work? I think, I think video is incredibly important. And we just had the conversation, I think, a few days ago at Campaigning Bureau, and we were talking about that we should definitely uh, rank the importance of, of video higher within our campaign mix. Actually, we don't have our, our own video team uh, as an internal team, and we work with external video producers, such as, such as you are. Uh, and we actually decided that a new age campaign can't live without good video stuff and good video content because content is more or less the kind of glue that holds everything together and video is the best transmitter for any kind of emotion in a campaign and emotion is why people engage. For a long time uh, in, in digital campaigning, in digital communication, you had uh, Facebook, uh, in some countries Twitter yeah. and some smaller platforms and that was it. Uh, we didn't get used to Snapchat yet and then Periscope and Meerkat come in. Yeah. Uh, how do you apply uh, those new networks into your uh, campaigns? I think two things are, are crucial in this, in this point. One uh, is what I've said before that content itself and the content piece is absolutely independent and content and content pieces are the glue that holds all together. This is one part of the answer. Uh, the second part of the answer is that we, and it actually depends on the necessity of the campaign, how necessary it is to really dive deep into each and every niche you're facing in the campaign, um, that you uh, actually have to decide, uh, following, for example, the Pareto principle, so 80-20 rule, yeah, uh, where you, with uh, a normal and adequate effort, uh, where you can really cover 80% of, of the important mainstream channels and leaving behind the 20% niches. But on the other side, if you get a campaign, for example, like in the United States, where, where two sides are battling against each other and we're in such a battle as we've seen in the Bush election, a few hundred uh, votes can count and make the difference, you actually can't leave behind any kind of network, so you really have to be present anywhere and everywhere. But I think this is really different here in our countries, here in Europe, and especially in Central and Eastern European countries, uh, where we really can focus and rely on the mainstream channels and, and really engage and try to be, produce valuable content for those channels. You were recently speaking at an event organized by the campaigning, uh, Campaigns and Elections yeah. magazine uh, yeah. in the United States. Yeah. And uh, tell me, what 
what is it that uh, marketers and campaigners in the United States can learn from an expert from Europe? Do we have uh, something that uh, they can actually take away from, yeah, from I think, I think, our experience? Yeah, here? absolutely. I think uh, one thing is if you, as we have the situation in Europe, when you can't actually rely on the existence uh, of third-party data as our U.S. colleagues do when you can't access paid data, when you can't merge uh, the credit card and consumer data with your voter file or customer file and do all the funny stuff they do, when you can't do that, mm -hmm. as it's the situation here in Europe, you have to go the harder way. And the harder way is actually to earn the, the data criteria and, and, and earn the data criteria finally by interacting with your audiences. So, and, and what I think uh, what they can learn is, is because we have to earn each and every piece of data by interaction, yep. this, this process of, of really respectfully uh, inviting the user to voluntarily donate his data, yeah? is something maybe they can learn from. Mm -hmm. My last question would be um, about the next big thing, because <laughs> it's always, you know, like uh, marketers, uh, agencies are always, always much more enthusiastic about, uh, you know, looking for the next big thing, innovating uh, than the clients are, because they, you know, they have to stay a bit more conservative. Mm -hmm. They're not so re re so much ready to take, take uh, risks. So, what is the next big thing, tool, uh, format you are uh, hoping for the clients to be ready to uh, to take on? Honestly, honestly, I, I don't actually believe that much in those next big thing stuff. Uh, what we see is is two things. I think one is that we we we're facing the development from seeing people as an audience then people as a media and now people as a resource. So this is really the stage we're working in, seeing your full audience as a potential of crowd resource. This is one thing I think. Um, the second thing is, and this is something we are working on, how can you actually uh, empower people better and better to organize such campaigns? How can you really empower people by knowledge, but also by method, or maybe by tools and technology, to really help people who bring in any kind of passion or belief, how can you support and help them to do the rest? Because my personal conviction is that if something is going to be successful on this world, should much more depend on if something is passionate about his thing than if he or she brings in the resources. So we really love to work on tools that help people with their resources or bringing up resources for their passion uh, that is really at the end of the day enough to bring in the passion, you know. So this is really what we are working on. And uh, yeah, the passion could be seen here at the event. Uh, I think you smashed the Twitter trends. We, in Germany. I don't know if we went uh, <laughs> I think number you were one, no, but we definitely were number two number trending two, in yeah. Germany. Yeah. So congratulations! Thank you a great you very event, much. and thank you for inviting us here. Thanks. And hope to Thanks. see you soon thank in you. Warsaw. Thanks. Bye bye all. Bye.